The word virus traces its roots back to ancient Latin, where it originally meant poison or noxious substance. Viruses infect cells through a multi-step process that typically involves the following stages. Viruses come in various types, classified by their structure, genetic material, and how they interact with hosts. Welcome to our exploration of viruses, the tiny but powerful infectious agents that have fascinated scientists for centuries. In this video, we'll delve into the intricate structure of viruses and uncover their role in causing disease. The word virus traces its roots back to ancient Latin, where it originally meant poison or noxious substance. Viruses are tiny infectious agents that can only replicate inside the living cells of organisms. They are not considered living organisms themselves because they lack the ability to carry out metabolic processes or reproduce independently. Viruses are incredibly diverse and can infect a wide range of organisms, including animals, plants, fungi, bacteria, and archaea. They are responsible for causing various diseases, ranging from the common cold and flu to more severe conditions such as HIV, AIDS, Ebola, and COVID-19. Understanding the structure of viruses is essential for understanding how they infect host cells and cause disease. Let's discuss the structure of viruses in detail. A virus consists of following parts. Viruses contain genetic material, either DNA or RNA, but never both. This genetic blueprint carries the instructions necessary for viral replication and protein synthesis. Depending on the virus, the genetic material can be single-stranded or double-stranded, linear, circular, or segmented. Surrounding the genetic material is the capsid, a protein coat composed of smaller units called capsomeres. The capsid provides protection for the viral genome and helps deliver it into host cells during infection. Viruses exhibit various capsid shapes, including helical, icosahedral, or complex structures. Some viruses have an additional outer layer called an envelope, derived from the host cell's membrane. The envelope contains viral glycoproteins crucial for host cell recognition and attachment during infection. This outer layer can influence the virus's stability and infectivity. Viruses may encode additional structural proteins essential for viral replication, assembly, and interaction with host cells. These proteins play vital roles in the virus's life cycle and its ability to evade the host immune system. Viruses infect cells through a multi-step process that typically involves the following stages. The first step is attachment. Viruses target specific receptors on the surface of host cells, allowing them to attach with precision. Step 2 is entry. Once attached, the virus gains entry into the cell. This can happen through various mechanisms, such as direct fusion with the cell membrane or endocytosis. Then comes uncoating. The virus sheds its outer coat inside the cell, releasing its genetic material into its cytoplasm. Next step is replication and transcription. The viral genetic material hijacks the host cell's machinery to replicate and transcribe viral components, utilizing the cell's resources. The next step is assembly. Newly synthesized viral components come together to form complete viral particles within the host cell. And the last step is release. Once assembled, the newly formed viruses are released from the host cell to infect other cells, continuing the infection cycle. Viral replication is a fascinating process essential for the survival and spread of viruses. It can be broadly categorized into two main strategies, lytic replication and lysogenic replication. Let's delve into these strategies to understand how viruses operate. 
In lytic replication, the virus hijacks the host cell's machinery to produce new viral particles rapidly. The process involves attachment, entry, replication, assembly, and release. The result, the host cell bursts, releasing a multitude of newly formed viruses. Lytic replication is characterized by its rapid onset, often leading to the destruction of the host cell and the spread of the virus to neighboring cells. On the other hand, lysogenic replication takes a more stealthy approach. Here, the viral DNA integrates into the host cell's genome, lying dormant as a prophage. Under specific triggers, the prophage can become activated, initiating viral replication and ultimately causing the lysis of the host cell. Lysogenic replication allows the virus to persist within the host cell for extended periods, potentially spreading its genetic material to subsequent generations of host cells. These are the two main viral replication strategies, each with its implications for viral survival and spread. Understanding these replication mechanisms is crucial for developing strategies to control viral infections and develop antiviral therapies. Viruses come in various types, classified by their structure, genetic material, and how they interact with hosts. Let's explore them one by one. Viruses, the microscopic agents of infection, come in diverse types classified by their genetic material. First, we have DNA viruses, like herpes viruses and papillomaviruses, carrying their genetic information in the form of DNA. On the other hand, RNA viruses, such as influenza viruses and HIV, utilize RNA as their genetic blueprint. Beyond genetics, Viruses also vary in their structural makeup. Some viruses sport an outer envelope composed of lipids, like influenza virus and HIV. Meanwhile, others lack this envelope, such as adenovirus and rhinovirus. Understanding a virus's host range sheds light on its infectivity. Certain viruses, like HIV and human herpes viruses, specialize in infecting humans exclusively. Conversely, zoonotic viruses, such as influenza viruses and Ebola virus, can leap between animals and humans. The mode of transmission plays a crucial role in a virus's spread. Respiratory viruses, like influenza viruses and rhinoviruses, hitch a ride on respiratory droplets. Others, like HIV and herpes simplex virus, are transmitted through intimate contact. Vector-borne viruses, such as dengue virus and Zika virus, rely on vectors like mosquitoes for transmission. Lastly, viruses can be categorized based on the diseases they cause. Some viruses, like HPV and hepatitis B virus, are notorious for their role in cancer development. Others target specific tissues, such as nerve cells with viruses like rabies virus, or cause severe symptoms like bleeding and organ failure with viruses like Ebola virus and dengue virus. Viruses, with their intricate classifications, remind us of the complex world of microbiology. Keep in mind that viruses can often overlap categories, and some may not fit neatly into one specific classification. Understanding the structure of viruses provides valuable insights into how they interact with host cells and cause disease. From the common cold to more severe conditions like COVID-19, viruses have a significant impact on human health. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the fascinating world of viruses. Stay curious stay informed, and together, let's continue to explore the mysteries of the microscopic universe.